I'm Frieder Hochheim, founder of Kino Flow Lighting Systems. Uh, we are here in uh, Santa Monica on a Ferris wheel, kinda, in the virtual world. Yes, we are. Uh, so what we've created here is a lighting system that's designed for the virtual production community. There's always been a desire to use the volume as a light source. The volume, of course, is made up of RGB pixels. Red, green, blue is not sufficient spectrum to properly illuminate the foreground. So we decided, let's do a pixel that is actually full spectrum. Well, how do we do that? Well, let's take a three color pixel, turn it into a five color pixel. So we go five color pixel by adding 2700 Kelvin, 6500 Kelvin, blending all that. And working together with uh, Megapixel VR, they have a Helios processor that is capable of driving our lights in sync with a volume. So we've created this panel now. It's about 27 pounds, two foot by four foot, 7,200 individual addressable pixels. Uh, only weighs 27 pounds and uh, it can synchronize to the volume. So if I were to make this as a DMX unit, first of all, I would need 140 universes per panel. <laughs> That's a lot. In this way, by going, using a, uh, you know, an RGB signal going directly to the panel, uh, we can actually synchronize this and gen lock to the volume. Now you can't do that with DMX. With DMX, there's latency issues with it. And so you'll get close, and in some cases it may not be necessary to be synchronized, but to have the ability to synchronize is a really big deal. So synchronization, uh, I think I heard uh, that you were saying like pixel pitch or whatever, that's a, another thing. Yeah, so pixel pitch, this is a 10 millimeter pixel pitch. That wall behind us is a 2.6, I believe, maybe a 2.8. Uh, by going to a 10 millimeter pitch and using what we call a 50-50 package, we can drive 10,000 nits out of a panel. So when you consider a, the background panel being somewhere between 375 to 1200, we can really throw an awful lot of light. So when you're using an image-based illumination, you're going to see those levels rise and fall, uh, but you'll be able to really drive it at full tilt 10,000 nits. Not only that, we can also convert this into a white light, Kelvin tunable light source. So if we don't want to have the image on it, we can simply go to a white light mode, and now we've got the equivalent of one of our image 80s, just on one panel, really blowing a lot of light out of that. So, sort of devil's advocate then. Um, how does this compare to some of the other systems like uh, Tim Kang and uh, Quasar, their system, uh, maybe the uh, Sumo Sky, uh, some of the other systems that are out there how, how do you fit into that world? Are you all different? There, there are fundamental differences. Uh, some of the uh, manufacturers will do lensed devices which have a long throw, and there's a need for that because we do need hard light sources. Uh, the big difference is uh, the DMX versus what we're doing, uh, feeding a, a signal directly to, uh, from the processor to the light, to the light head. Uh, so where synchronization is not necessary, I think those will work very nicely uh, together but this is essentially a large soft source. These are unlensed devices. Uh, so I think there's a need for that. When we compare to other systems, uh, I mean, there are other manufacturers will do zones. So they'll have multiple zones. And again, we were, we were approached in 2019 by uh, Lux Machina, they came to the ASC, and explained all the difficulties, they, the challenges they had on a set, uh, on a VR set and they appeal to the lighting community and say, can you come up with a solution? So, some of the solutions you see here at the show, uh, and some of them are very effective. Uh, all of them work to a certain degree, and now it's a matter of what is most appropriate for the shot that's, that you're trying to do. Every shot is its own unique challenge. And in this case, we, in our case, we've tried to approach it from the, from the sort of an environmental uh, lighting uh, option to say, if I was on location, how would what, what's the natural light? Well, by creating that image, that is your natural light because it's now full spectrum. Yet you still need a hard source. So there's still a necessity that even if you have a wonderful uh, volume and you've, you've captured an image, there's still the sun and that needs to be put in there. So the need for a hard source is always going to be there. 
and then you get into other complexities such as uh, you know then the camera moves and whatnot. But one of the things that we're capable of doing that no one can do is the ability to work in alpha channels. Mm. An alpha channel being the ability to divide a frame into individual slices, putting data on individual slices. Net effect is, for example, you could put two to three cameras on that volume and they will all see something different. I could then synchronize our lights to each of those three scenes, one a night scene, one a day scene, one possibly a traveling scene, and you each, all three cameras will see something different. We're operating at 30 kilohertz, and since we're genlocked, we can synchronize the light to pulse per frame within a subframe to illuminate that one shot next to another. Okay, that's kind of gone over my head. Yeah, uh, you could actually have three different scenes being recorded by three different cameras at the same time. Yes. It's... <laughs> we, we started to explain this to Rob Legato, uh, the effects guru of, of Hollywood, uh, multi-academy award winner, and he had your reaction too. It was like... He goes, I don't know where I'd use that. But they'll find a way. I know I'm going to have to. And so one of, the, one of the ways you do use it though, is when you're on a virtual set and now you have two cameras and you think the frost rooms uh, intersect. By working on a subframe level, you can do that without interfering. So you can actually have an XR situation where you have two different cameras, two different views of the scene, and you can work it out because you're able to slice it. Exactly, so you can actually cross the street, you can cross the beam. Whoa! You can cross the beam, and you, from a viewing experience, or from the camera experience, it's perfectly seamless. That's amazing. It's taking this technology a quantum leap forward for where we're just thinking about it as a final pixel. How do we capture final pixel? This takes it way beyond that. So this technology, or this capability, is in there because of our the, the frequency that we're operating at, because we're working on a megapixel Helios processor that has that capability, uh, so it's, it's pretty heady stuff. Can you incorporate hard sources, other units, other manufacturers' units uh, into this system? So, at, presently today, it would have to be on a DMX basis, absolutely, that would work. Uh, our goal is to incorporate uh, the, uh, the driver cards that we're using in the Mimic, incorporate those in our other products, uh, in hard light sources that we're developing, lipsoidals, fresnels, that kind of thing. And so to create an entire ecosystem where we are free of DMX. When I mentioned this to Local 728 at one of the workshops, there was a, a sea of smiles emerging. Like, no DMX? Wouldn't that be welcome? So, uh, yeah. So now when you say uh, your other instruments, are you talking about a larger company? Since uh, KinoFlow was acquired in uh, August of 21, uh, we're endeavoring to now bring our color science into theatrical uh, fixtures and other hard light fixtures. Uh, so far, theatrical instruments have not done well in our market because of the colorimetry. There are different requir requirements for us other than just a, you know, a live event, and so uh, that's where we're going with this. Fantastic. Uh, thanks so much for the overview and for blowing my mind, and now I'm no good for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Such is life. This is a, a 21st century. Welcome. Thanks a lot. Thanks. All right. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's cool.